Tour de France bikes are some of the fastest, lightest and most expensive in the world. But while they look like the ones that you see on a Sunday morning club ride, there are several things that make them oh so special. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe and check out our other Tour de France tech videos. The link to the playlist is just up here. While the pros might have fancy looking bikes, many of us would simply be unable to ride more than a mile on one thanks to the incredibly long and incredibly narrow positions that the pros ride in. Pro riders often use handlebars that are 36 centimeters wide at the brake hoods, and these days they even turn the brake hoods inward to get their hands even narrower. Having a super narrow handlebar helps the rider to reduce their frontal profile, and this is crucial for going fast. While tube shapes can be optimized and wheel tire interfaces can be smoothed to save every watt possible, nothing has a bigger impact on drag reduction than making yourself small on the bike. We made that discovery for ourselves when we tested the best value aero upgrades in the Silverstone wind tunnel. If you want to save 30 watts for free, then make sure you go and check out that video. Pro riders also go for incredibly long stems. 130, 140 and even 150 millimeter units are not uncommon, which they use to compensate for the smaller than recommended frame sizes. Pros often want the shorter head tube length to get as low as possible, but that results in a shorter top tube Add in a saddle that is pushed far forward for maximal power transfer and you've got to use a very big stem. Combining such a narrow bar with an extra long stem isn't something that sells well to the general public. As a result, you'll often see pros using integrated cockpits that aren't actually available to buy. So how can a rider be comfortable in this position for the whole Tour de France? Well, while most of us would consider 10 hours in the saddle per week as quite a lot, the pros can clock up a staggering 30 hours per week during bigger training blocks. A pro's body is also well adapted to these super aggressive riding positions as they carry very little weight in their upper bodies, thus placing less stress on their arms and back than if a recreational rider tried using the same position. So don't rush off to buy a narrow bar or slam your stem. It could land you with a very sore back. Frame, wheels, group set, tires and finishing kit. You can ride what you want in whatever clothing you want. Your only limiting factor is your bank account. You don't even have to stick to the so-called rules of cycling. If you want to run a set of Campagnolo wheels with a Shimano group set, you go for it. Fancy wearing kit that doesn't match your bike color? You do you. The pros meanwhile, they get what they're given. Now while it might sound like the absolute dream to be handed thousands of dollars worth of bikes and kit, they can't simply use a rival brand's products if they don't like what their sponsor has provided. Their bike has to match their kit and the design that they get at the start of the year is the one that they have to wear every time they go out on the bike. Imagine wearing the same outfit for work every day of the year. Even your jazziest dress or jumper would get boring after a while. Add in the possibility of your team kit being offensive to human eyes and we can only imagine that some pros hearts sink when they open up their new box of kit in January. A pro rider will also be in a tight spot if their bike or components aren't up to scratch. There's not a lot that they can do if their bike is the slowest in the bunch or if their components keep breaking. The pros just have to make do and get on with riding their bikes. Well, that's what's meant to happen. Over the years, we've seen plenty of pro bikes using components that have been treated to some carefully placed electrical tape or a little sharpie magic. Tires, stems, saddles and shoes are common items to quietly swap out. But would you ride what you were given or would you be a fussy pro? Let me know down in the comments. Picture this, you finish your Saturday spin, tired, sweaty and rather peckish. As you clamber, 
elegantly from your bike, a highly skilled mechanic takes it off you before you can put it in the shed and asks you whether your bike was okay today. If your gears were a little off or you could hear the disc brake a bit after some heavy braking, you tell them and they'll have it sorted before you meet the local club for the Sunday ride. It's a dream scenario that many of us will never experience, but for the pros, this is a daily privilege on a stage race like the Tour de France. Their bike will be taken to the team mechanics truck where it will be washed until squeaky clean. The tires will be checked for any debris that might cause a puncture before the chain is lubed and any issues worked on. The riders will be busy having a shower, getting a massage and tucking into their dinner by now, but the mechanics are sometimes bought a beer from the hotel bar, so those long hours are more than worth it. While you might have spent thousands of pounds making your lovely bike as light as possible, a pro's race bike often sits a few hundred grams above the UCI's minimum weight limit. Okay, for the toughest mountain stages, the riders will select their lighter bikes, but with the flat and rolling stages of 2022's race being ridden at close to 50 kilometers per hour, aerodynamics were what mattered. If, as a rider, you've got an aerodynamically optimized position, it takes a bit less effort to ride at those eye-watering speeds. Even when sitting in the peloton, it can help, and every bit of energy saved makes a difference in a three-week race. With that in mind, riders will often opt for heavier aero frames and deeper carbon wheels. Take the radical Trek Madone of the Lidl Trek team. Set up with Bontrager Aeolus 62mm tubeless ready wheels and a SRAM red access group set, the bike weighs 8.2 kilos. That's pretty hefty compared to what many of us imagine a pro's bike to weigh. But come to climbing bikes and you'll still find an obsession with weight saving. Simon Clark's new Factor 02 VAM weighed just 6.925 kilos when we spotted it at the start of this year's race. And you can bet that other riders will be pushing their bikes even closer to the UCI's 6.8 kilo minimum weight limit. No, we're not about to start a rumor about hidden motors. We're talking about tubeless liners. These are effectively just polyethylene tubes that sit inside the tires. They don't absorb tubeless sealant, and when the tires are inflated, they shrink down, removing the possibility of increasing rolling resistance. The magic happens when you have a puncture that the sealant can't plug. A tubeless liner helps to keep the tire on the rim, and you keep rolling at a good speed while you wait for the team car to come up to the back of the bunch. Having ridden them myself, I can say that it feels like you've got about 20 PSI in your tire. You'll definitely need to get a wheel change, but at least the bike is still rideable. In a bunch racing scenario, this is a crucial safety measure, and while not every setup works perfectly, they are a sensible addition to a set of race wheels. For a few years, we didn't actually know when a rider or team were using tubeless inserts, but now that insert brands want customers to buy their products, stickers have started appearing on wheels. You might be wondering about the downsides of tubeless liners. They certainly sound good, but they make the tire very difficult to install, and then unseating the bead to perform a roadside repair is nigh on impossible. Add in the high cost, and we think that tubeless liners are probably best saved for race day wheels and pro bikes. Now, in terms of the tires themselves, these are often lighter and faster versions of the ones that you can buy. Some brands even outsource the manufacture of their pro race tires to certain other companies. Which of these have you got on your bike? Do you think that with one of these bikes, you'd be winning the tour? Or are you happier with your own bike? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, and check out our other Tour de France videos. It's just up here. We'll see you next time.